Greetings everyone, Brett here with Hammerhead Model Making, back with another full build video. Today we're going to be looking at Edward's Spitfire Mark 1. Now this is a kit that I was really looking forward to building, uh, specifically because it had the markings for a pilot named Douglas Bader. And he's quite an interesting character. He had uh, both of his legs amputated, and yet still was able to fly in combat. And I just think that's fascinating, not just for the, the fact itself, but for the fact that it happened in World War II. So pretty much just like every other kit, we start in the cockpit. Now, if you've watched my video on the Edward Zero, you'll know how much I gushed about how much detail was in that cockpit. And I think this cockpit is even better. And it's, it really is a shame in the end because, you know, the canopy and the opening for the cockpit are so small that you really kind of end up missing a lot of the, or not being able to see a lot of the detail in here. But, I mean, it's just phenomenal out of the box. Even just like, and just like the Zero, just the plastic alone is great. But then you throw in all of the, you know, photo etch and pre-painted photo etch that you get in the you know, in the Profi Pack or the Limited Edition kit, and it just takes us to a whole new level. So here, the really the only modification that I made was just to drill out these holes, th these uh, lightning holes in the um, the frames. That was that's pretty much the only modification I made. Uh, you know, that wasn't called for in the instructions, and I think it just kind of helps just add that little extra bit to it but it's totally not necessary you could just you could leave because there's already an indentation there you could just leave it and then you know a nice dark wash would would fill those in and kind of fulfill the same the same role there but it's just a phenomenal kit sorry a phenomenal cockpit out of the box so here we're just adding some armor plate behind the pilot's head and uh, then adding some plastic parts here so that the actual seat and kind of seat structure is built up over multiple parts. Uh, this is just so these oxygen tanks that go on the inside of the, the cockpit as well. Um, you even have this great tiny little handle on the control stick in Photo Edge. It was just amazing detail going into this. And... It just, it can't be, I, I can't say it enough how great it is. Um, just using some regular super glue there to glue down all the photo etch parts to the plastic parts. And um, just making sure it's secured on there nice and good. I think one of the things that I struggled with when it came to the painting of this cockpit was just trying to figure out what the right color for the seat was. And, and I'm, I'm not like a, I'm not super well versed on Spitfires, but I do know that the seats, you know, there's a lot of back and forth on what color the seats were. So, um, once everything's built up, I gave it a nice layer of Mr. Surfacer 1500 black primer. And now I'm just hitting certain areas of the cockpit in aluminum. So pretty much everything forward of the pilot seat was painted interior green. Everything behind that was left bare metal. So I'm just getting the actual metal parts done first. Those will get masked off and then we'll do the interior green. Uh, don't forget to paint the, you know, the inside of the lower wings as there is a small chance that you'd be able to see down through there. So just don't forget it. Uh, here we've masked off the aluminum, and we're going with the interior green paint. So, just using some MIG paint here. Goes on really nice. Really happy with the color. Um, I don't necessarily love the color of the British interior green, but honestly, painted up and given a nice wash, it actually does end up looking really nice. And and the MIG color, I think, is a is a good match. So just go around getting everything painted that we need to get painted and uh, making sure we get a nice good even coat on everything. I think if I were doing like a slightly larger scale, like 132nd or something, I, I would go through the trouble of like uh, doing a little bit of pre-shading, you know, or modeling underneath the main color. Uh, but at this scale, I just, it, you could, but you can also get away with not doing it. Um, so now we're just gonna do some, pick out some details in uh, in some Vallejo 
brush paints. Um, just making sure everything is is the correct color. Again, the, so the Edward instructions do a really good job of of specifically calling out all of these little color callouts. Uh, but a, as always, it also helps to check your references. Um, just to kind of make sure that you know if you have two sources telling you this color, you know this object should be black or whatever, then you're usually pretty pretty good to know that that's what color it should be. And uh, gave everything a gloss coat, and now we can give it a pin wash. So we're just using my favorite dark brown wash for green vehicles here. Just kind of go around all of the raised detail, and really not trying to flood it onto everything. Just trying to keep it close to where the the detail should be. Uh, you know, and, and we're going to go everywhere with that. Once it dries, which is about 25 to 30 minutes, we can go in with a cotton bud and remove a lot of the excess wash and so it, it leaves us nice contrast in all of like the recesses and the corners of details and just kind of gives it a little bit of a general dirty look to it without necessarily going full you know messy so once we've gotten that all done we can hit everything with a matte coat take away that shine and this will really tie in all of the the painting, the hand, the brush painting, and the wash, and really just kind of tie it all together. So with all the painting done, we can start adding all of our um, pre-painted photo etch. So this is the pre-colored photo etch, and uh, they there are a couple of layers to the instrument panel, which which is nice because it kind of helps build that depth between you know the instrument faces and the dials and and all of those things. I I like it, so. We, we add on this next piece here, and then finally this, this last piece at the very center. So really like how it turned out. And and of course, because it's Edward Photo Etch for an Edward kit, the fit is flawless. You don't have to worry about um, really making any major modifications to the kit to get it to fit. Here we can add in the pre-painted belts. So we do the lap belts first, but we wait to do the shoulder harnesses until the cockpit is largely assembled, mainly just because the shoulder harness actually extends back beyond the seat into the back of the aircraft. So it's just better to, to wait and do that later. Um, like I said, just the, the fit on this is just phenomenal and really had no issues doing any kind of... Um, or having any issues with the fit of the cockpit. And, and and there is a lot of plastic going into there and that have to get sandwiched between these two fuselage halves. And so it's always, it, even though like I'm very comfortable working with Edward kits and I know that they're, all of their new toolings have great reputation, it always still makes me nervous that I will do something wrong and make it not fit. But fortunately that was not the case here. So here you can see how the... Um, the shoulder harnesses get they kind of slot through the armor plating behind the pilot and then it extends back into further into the aft end of the fuselage so that's just why i think it's a little bit better to wait to, do, to put these in until it's more convenient uh, so now we're just getting everything glued down with a little bit of super glue we can get the control column attached and make sure that that's all correctly aligned <clears throat> And finally fit in the instrument panel. So this you kind of have to hook it around this lower part and then you can slot it, get it slotted in. So you just a little bit of care is needed, but but once you get it, it's it's pretty solid. And there we go. Just just a lot of detail packed in there. So there I've got the actual rudder pedals on there. Those are photo etch. So it's just a phenomenal cockpit. So now moving on, we can start getting everything all put together. So once once the cockpit is is done, the the rest of the build progresses rather quickly. So just a matter of getting all of these seams uh, glued up and aligned. Fit here was generally pretty good. Uh, I did end up having to use a little bit of filler in places, but I think that was just more to my. Um, bad gluing job than it is to the kits engineering uh another interesting feature is you actually get gun barrels um 
this is really cool, Con especially considering that they're actually recessed into the wing that you wouldn't necessarily normally see them sticking out. Um, I, I believe on some of the painting option marking options, uh, there are actually versions where some of the barrels do stick out beyond the leading edge of the wing. On this one, it don't. You wouldn't necessarily see them on the completed model unless you were looking directly in there and you didn't have the uh, doped patches over the, the gun barrels, but kind of a neat feature that they actually have them represented. So, uh, moving on, most of the gluing surface, like you'll see here on this, the tail here, um, the, the actual seam lines are on, you know, natural panel lines. So there's really a very little cleanup that has to be done. Um, all the control surfaces, they all, they all go on nice and fit well. If you wanted to, you could cut off the tabs and put, reposition them. Um, if, if that's something you want to do, I just kept them in their, you know, neutral state. Gluing everything. Wings, the wing fit was good. Uh, I only really had to um, putty that very aft end joint. So you get different wing tips, presumably because they have, you know, clipped wing spitfires. Ailerons going on. Those that all fit well. Here we're just going to hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and and uh, remove the seam line. The fit was so great that this this really required very little work to actually get that blended in. Like I said, the the upper seam was a little bit required a little bit more work. Um, mainly just filing and sanding with just a little bit of putty. I won't bore you with the whole process, but. Uh, basically, I'd, you know, start with a rougher sandpaper and then work your way through progressively finer grit sandpaper until you've got a nice smooth finish and that seam disappears. Here we're adding in some photo etch for the radiator. This was very well detailed. The, the photo etch is very nice and the radiator is relatively large, so it's, it's definitely something you would see on the finished model, so I'm glad they include that. Uh, this is just the aft end, the, the back end of the radiator. And it does have, I mean, you could just use the plastic. The plastic is textured as such so that it would, it would look like the radiator. I think the photo etch is just that great extra, you know, little bit there. Here we're adding on the rear view mirror to the canopy. So just, just be careful when you're gluing that because you are gluing it to a clear part. And you just want to make sure that you don't get glue where you don't want it. Fit of the canopy to the fuselage was amazing. And it just needed no work it just fit right on uh the aft part as well that fit great and no issues there just being judicial and careful with the extra thin cement and using edward's provided masks we can mask up the canopy so you know the fact that it comes with their own masks is very handy very convenient and you don't have to worry about any cutting near your clear parts things like that these these side pieces did God, give me a little bit of trouble trying to get them to fit but it's mainly just because i had to add that extra that extra part on top of the canopy for the rear view mirror but i did get it working eventually all right so we gave everything a nice good coat of mr servicer 1500 black and now we're going to hit everything with some aluminum so i knew i wanted to do a little bit of weathering a little bit of chipping on this so i i hit some of the most um likely places to receive chipping so the wing route around the the gun access uh openings and along the leading edge of the wing but another interesting thing is the the paint scheme for this one uh had a natural metal finish on the underside uh under, underneath the engine cowling as well as the the aft fuselage so it was just convenient to be able to spray, you know, my metal undercoat at the same time of doing the metallic color for the overall camouflage. And now we're going to hit it with a little bit of liquid mask. This is not the liquid mask I'm normally used to using. Uh, I had just barely run out of the MIG liquid mask that I normally use. And this stuff is much thinner than the MIG brand version. So... It was just it was a little bit more difficult to apply but it actually ended up working out better because i was able to get smaller paint chips so here i am using uh mig's raf early color set i've been looking forward to using this for a while I've, I've had it in my on my paint shelf for a while just this was just the first raf plane that i did using these colors so um 
I, I ended up thinning the paint down quite a bit and just building up the layers uh, over multiple layers. And this, I, I find that with the MIG paint, this really gives a nice smooth finish. So um, that's just the way I prefer to do it. It does take a little bit longer, but, but it also gives you a little bit more control over the paint, especially if you're doing this over like a marble coat or something. For the actual camouflage, I just use uh, long tacks of blue tack to kind of delineate the camouflage scheme. And you can see I have little pieces of, of tape in there. That was kind of my marker to be like, no, don't don't paint in that one. Paint where there isn't tape. And uh, just, get, uh, just get really close to the surface with the airbrush so I don't have any overspray and work my way around. Um, I actually, so this is, this is the, the dark green that comes in the set. And, and after I painted it, I actually wasn't really happy with it and ended up going back over it with a slightly darkened version of the paint. I just added in some uh, kind of a black gray color to the dark green and just brought it, toned it down just a little bit since I, it, it felt really bright to me. And, um, but unfortunately I didn't film that part. So I'm just, I'm letting you know that that's what I ended up doing. If you notice a slight color discrepancy later on in the video. Um, and now for the underside of the wing. So the other extra interesting part about the underside camouflage, in addition to the actual bare metal is the fact that one wing was painted white, one wing was painted black. And I believe this was a pre-war, um, directive to do that with the wings. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that, so if if I am wrong, let me know. But I just, I love the look of the white and black wing. And I just think it is so cool to see. Uh, and they have different versions where they had they had some that were just, just the wings were painted white and black. And then there was others where the entire underside of the fuselage was painted half white, half black. Um, there was some that was just like, just one black wing or one white wing. They had different variations, but it's just, it's a neat look. For, for the black, I'm using NATO black. Uh, I've really tried to get away from using just pure black, uh, except, you know, for like my primer coats and stuff, my base coats, or when it really makes sense to have a good solid pure black. But in general, I try to use like a NATO black. I just think it looks, it has a better scale effect than pure black. Well, we can also paint up the prop and the, the hub at the same time as the underside, since it, it's black as well on this particular aircraft. Uh, really happy with how the demarcation came out between the black wing and the white wing. Pretty much all over the aircraft, I was just I was really pleased with with how well the masking did, and held up to the the paint. So just just neat. I just love that there's so many different colors going on on this Spitfire. You got the top two camouflage colors, the 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 aluminum, the black and white. Just a lot of fun. Now. If you've seen some of my other videos on Edward kits, you'll know I'm not a fan of their new decals. Um, in fact, I completely scrapped an entire kit because the decals just completely destroyed, or well, I should say I destroyed the decals. And I know that some people have no problem with them and they're able to do the whole like peel off the, the overly sized, you know, um, carrier film and just and they look great and amazing I just have not been able to figure it out so here I decided to mask off and paint all the markings now the the masks I'm using were provided to me by kitmask.com I highly recommend you check them out and uh, they they offer all kinds of masking jobs for canopies markings you name it and if they don't have it you can email them and they will work out how to get the get what you need uh, in addition, I am using some very specific paint mixtures here for the RAF roundels. Those were given to me by uh, Matt at Matt, Matt's Modeling Den on Instagram. Uh, highly recommend checking out his Instagram page. And big shout out to him for giving me these color um, recipes because they looked completely spot on to me. Loved them. Really happy with them. So I'll, I'll link his thing down in the page below or down in the com or the description down below so you can you can check out his Instagram amazing work that he does. So I was this was my first time really going over and doing pretty much all of the major markings via mask and paint. And it was a little kind of a little intimidating at first. 
uh, especially with an RAF roundel where you have multiple layers of colors and rings and trying to get everything centered so they don't they don't look wonky but the uh, the masks provided by kit masks were just a plus you know top notch exactly what I needed and they look fantastic so here we're just doing the squadron codes and I believe I'm just using a sky gray for these don't know if that's super accurate Again, all of you uh, Spitfire uh, aficionados, you can let me know. But uh, it looked right to my eyes. And uh, again, so these just these were great. And then finally, the actual aircraft registration number. Um, I, I was really happy to get this provided as a mask as well. Wasn't expecting it from kitmask.com, but they uh, they went above and beyond on this, and they performed flawless. Just absolutely fantastic. And you can see here, just it just looks so good. <laughs> so just very, very happy with this. Um, moving forward, I can start removing some of that liquid mask that we applied earlier and expose a little, you know, chips of metal and uh, really, really going minimal on this. Um, again, these, these, this was still really, really early Battle of Britain and you know, the, the aircraft, while they were being used a lot, um, weren't necessarily being completely abused and, and beaten. So here we're just going to give everything a nice coat of gloss. This is the Alclad Aqua Gloss in preparation for all of our weathering that's going to go on this, and as well as some of the smaller decals that will need to be put on. So there's still a bunch of stencils that need to go on uh, for the aircraft. So those will, all, those will all be done via decal. And in the end, I didn't have too much of an issue with them. I'm just glad I didn't have to do the larger decals. So just make sure everything gets a good, nice coat of gloss, just to make sure that everything is all, you know, getting the same treatment. Here you can see where, and so with, with these decals, I did my little process a little bit differently. So with these, I actually applied a little bit of the Walther's Solvacet on the surface and then put the decal on top. And then eventually I did come over and, and put more Solvacet on top of the decal. And that actually seemed to work pretty good to get these to, to really snuggle down and recess, you know, into the recesses and, and details without having to remove the, the large carrier film. So I was pleased with how that turned out. Again, I just, I was not, I did not want to have to do that for the whole, on the, the larger things. So here I'm just mixing up some oil paints to do a oil wash. Uh, the reason why I didn't use my normal dark brown wash, the MIG wash, is because I just I didn't want it to be so strong uh, uh, against all the different colors on this aircraft. So I, I really wanted it to be more subtle and uh, really kind of keep that weathering to a minimum. And this worked. This ended up working out really good. Uh, for the uh, here for the for the black wing, I did a, a really light gray wash to really just kind of help pick out those panel lines. And, and there's a lot of lovely, like amazing rivet detail on, on this kit. And so I really wanted to be able to make some of that pop a little bit. So once the, just kind of similar to the washes that we've done in the past, once it dries, um, do a little bit of white spirit on a paper towel here and remove the excess. And it just comes, it just wipes right off, uh, but still leaving a little bit of that wash in the, the beautiful detail. So really, really shines through, no pun intended, on the metallic parts here. Very pleased with that. For some of the more, you know, difficult to reach spots or troublesome spots, Q-tip is great. Getting the, the rest of that wash out of there and cleaning it all up. So, all right, with the wash done and the decals done, we can get every, give everything a nice coat of matte, knock down that shine. Now, I ended up kind of bringing this down to more of like a satin or a, or a semi-gloss and uh instead of like a just like a true dead matte finish and very pleased i'm glad i did that because you know if you even if you look at like actual aircraft even though like they re, they had like a matte paint job there still was some shine to them just kind of the nature of being a, a metallic machine the masking is removed and it absolutely did its job perfect no complaints there looks great uh, here we're going to airbrush on some exhaust staining just using a really dark, almost black gray for this. Not quite NATO black, but uh, pretty close. And really thin, low pressure, just kind of build up a few coats of this. Again, I wasn't going to go too hard on this and, and you know, really dirty it up. Uh, this was more just to kind of 
indicate, yeah, it's there's exhaust there. It's being used. Um, for the actual exhaust stacks themselves, they were painted aluminum. And then I give it a, a, a good solid coat of Agrax Earthshade by Games Workshop. Uh, by, by or Sorry, by Citadel. And I built this up over about three coats, I think. You, you, you do a coat, let it dry. Do another coat, let it dry. and But it dries dull but still allows kind of that metallic shine to show through a little bit because it is somewhat translucent and I just really happy with the effect that it gives on the exhaust because it makes it look used and burnt and worn but without making it look like nasty and dirty just I, I like the effect so we can start kind of start adding some of our little details here uh, like the door and and I, I I apologize for not showing I didn't have footage of building up the door but it's actually like six photo etch parts that go onto the little door itself and looks amazing uh, really helps sell the the open cockpit look um, I decided to do the, the the dope fabric squares over the gun ports at the end because really in, in reality these were applied over everything and that's it just and I think this is actually one instance where the thick Edward decals kind of work in your favor. Um, what I what my goal was to was is to portray this as it had just come back from a mission. And and so I wanted to have the, the fabric covers on there. I will eventually poke holes in them and, and do some gun streaking over them to show that they were actually shot through. Um, but first, I wanted to get a little bit of just got a little little bit of dirt build up on the wings here. Um, if you've seen a lot of my other recent videos, you'll I, I go into much more detail on how I do this process, but it's it's largely the same as those other videos. So uh, you can just get an idea of you know you wet the whole surface with um, uh, odorless mineral spirits, and then work your paint in and blend it in. Same thing for the underside, just a little bit of exhaust or not sorry not exhaust uh, oil streaking and, and grime streaking, using some light colors over the black part just to kind of show the contrast. Um, but re re relatively um, simple. We're just hitting like little dabs of the oil paint and then streaking that back to give that impression. So pretty straightforward and uh, I like the look. I, I, it's, I do like doing that kind of weathering, but I, I, so I kind of had to restrain myself a little bit, but I'm, I'm pleased with how it turned out. It, I think it fits the subject. So here you can just see I'm just I'm poking through that that decal material to show the exposed guns and hitting it with a little bit of black oil paint and then with a dry brush so this doesn't have thinner on it we're just going to slowly blend that back just to kind of give the impression of the uh you know the, the gun staining and I, this is one of those things where i know that there's not a lot of photographic evidence for like heavy gun staining like this, but it's it's more of just like an artistic representation of showing, you know, these guns were used. And I just, I like the look. So now we're just getting some of the really small details um, fitted on and, the, you know, things that I know that I would break during the normal assembly process, getting the navigation lights painted up. So these are just being done with Tamiya clear paints over... Uh, liquid chrome to to give a nice you know kind of transparent effect here and straightforward easy to do uh, I highly recommend having some of the Tamiya clear paints in your inventory they can come in handy so here we're gonna do the rigging uh, so we're just doing this with super glue and the the MIG rigging line so this is kind of like a, an elastic nylon rigging line so it's stretchy which really helps because you can pull it tight and it'll keep that stretchiness. It'll keep that, you know, looking tight there. And it really bonds the super glue pretty quickly. So, you know, your working time is is, is pretty fast. Um, but it, it can be a little tricky sometimes, especially on smaller scales. On 48 scales, it's usually not too bad. But it, it can be tricky here. So um, at this point, once, once the glue fully dries, then we can just trim off the excess. I am using a brand new blade here to do this and it just barely takes any pressure at all and it will pop right off and there we go so that's that's the build if uh if you've made it this far thanks for sticking around and i hope you enjoyed this build i i, de I definitely enjoyed this build it was a lot of fun 
the uh, the figure there is actually included in the Edward limited edition uh, titled The Few. And it is of Douglas Bader. It was sculpted specifically of Douglas Bader. So that was another reason why I wanted to build this kit because it comes with a fantastic resin figure to use. And uh, just kind of, a, I, I highly recommend Googling him and l looking up his story. Really interesting, fascinating man. And fun subject, great kit by Edward. They, they really just do a phenomenal job and really enjoyed it. So... Anyways, if you uh, if you enjoyed the the video, um, leave a like and and uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And um, again, I recommend visiting kitmask.com. Check them out, um, as well as my friend Matt over on Instagram. Check his, out his work, phenomenal work that he does. And uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, I I would ask you either why, or you know, ask you to go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, I try to do build videos and review videos as often as I, I can. And if you'd like to even go even further, you can consider supporting the channel on Patreon. So, and speaking of Patreon, just want to give a shout out to my patrons and those that support this channel and everybody that watches and hits like and leaves me a comment. I really appreciate it. Look forward to, uh, look forward to the next few videos that are coming out and we'll, we'll see you around. Cheers.